What if I told you Sukuna's mother was Master Tengen? Or should I say, she helped create the natural calamity? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? This crackpot theory I'm about to break down can help prove it. Chapter 257 revealed Sukuna ate his twin in the womb. But one thing the English translation missed out on was the way he addressed his mother with humility, using the term Gubo. But why would Sukuna show respect for his mother since he declared that love is worthless? And more importantly, is the connection between these two deeper than the community thought? For example, Gege confirmed that Sukuna's kimono is usually for women, but when you compare it to how Tengen look, she's wearing the same thing and looks malnourished. But that's not all. Tengen would explain why Sukuna's mother would be hungry whilst pregnant, as she practices Soku Shinbutsu, which involves the act of not eating to enter a deep state of meditation. This is evident through chapter 220, when she performs this act on Sukuna's body. I'll dive deeper into this in a moment as this idea would lead to Sukuna eating his twin. Now, quote unquote, Sukuna's stupid mother was starving which led to a Kodaku-like occurrence of him being forced to defy fate by eating his twin brother. Surprisingly, Jujutsu Kaisen follows the Samsara cycle in Buddhism where his twin entered the cycle of rebirth reincarnating into Jin Itadori. Now you may ask, ABD, there would be many reasons to why Tengen would be starving whilst pregnant, such as being poor or shunned by society, which was common in that era. For example, even Choso's mother had to run from her home out of shame. However, we know Tengen had worshippers, a cult, and was seen as a divine being, meaning that this wouldn't be the case. The answer is much more sinister, as Tengen starved herself on purpose to create the strongest being and evolution. Remember, Tengen was the one who spread Japanese Buddhism and preached what would become the foundation for Jujutsu sorcerers during the Nara period. In other words, Tengen was a devout Buddhist who sought enlightenment to escape the cycle of rebirth. A way to achieve this is to evolve from death itself by optimizing curse energy and understanding it. Death has a close relation to evolution. The entire idea of the culling game is to force this process with mankind. For example, Kenjaku admitted to Yuki that he wanted Mahito to face Yuji for this very idea on purpose, so that Mahito could evolve through death and intended for Jogo to do the same. We witnessed this occur against Nanami and Itadori. Mahito first tasted death which gave him a better understanding of his own soul and this unlocked his domain expansion which means being near death makes you stronger. This is exactly what Sakura freaking Gojo stated as well. He states, right on the verge of death, I understood the core of curse energy. And guess what? Sukuna, Tengen and Kenjaku were experiencing the same thing. In chapter 161, we find out that sorcerers in the golden age desired to fight to death and it was normal to do so, which would explain why everyone was so powerful compared to the modern day. The manga states that death is something humans fear and detest, but linger beyond it. Even Jogo confirmed this with the idea of cursed spirits being part of the samsara cycle as they will reincarnate in a hundred years. Now you're probably wondering, how is Tengen linked to Sukuna and Kenjaku? Well, the trio are the embodiments of this concept in Jujutsu Kaisen, all having some form of immortality through different techniques, bringing back what Angel stated in chapter 220. Even though all sorcerers in the Heian era called Sukuna the Fallen One, they still envied him for accomplishing an impossible task. Sukuna remained the only sorcerer who had unlocked a way to keep his soul and body intact. 
despite traversing a thousand years. This was a reason ancient sorcerers agreed to Kenjaku's plan to reincarnate in the Cullen Games as a way to replicate what Sukuna did. However, Tengen was an exception for this because her curse technique was immortality itself. What others craved was handed to her, although it came with its own set of problems. Her immortality curse technique had to be reset every 500 years, therefore requiring a sacrifice. But this is where things get more interesting. In chapter 220, we saw Sukuna devour his own corpse from the Heian era, which was retrieved from Tengen's barriers by Kenjaku. This was ironically a mummy, which was preserved by Tengen herself. The corpse shows Sukuna sitting in a Buddhist meditative pose, which Tengen was the teacher of. This is called Soko Shinbutsu, which is a means to be granted access to Tusita Heaven, one of the seven heavens whose residents live for 1.6 million years before they re-enter the rebirth cycle. People who practice this give up eating, reaching the point of death and enter mummification whilst alive. However, you know how Sukuna has this wood-like tree thing on his face? There's an answer to that as well through this method, as it involves a strict diet called Mokujiki, which literally means eating a tree. And so, who would attempt this process other than a Buddhist guru with the knowledge needed? That's right, it was not Sukuna himself who turned this body into a mummy. We find out Hengen did it in the Heian error. This gives us proof of why Sukuna was hungry in the womb as Tengen decided to go through Sokushin Butsu, a death ritual to attempt enlightenment. I mean, even Tengen turns into a tree at the end of her life. This would make sense for Kenjaku calling her a friend and even claiming that she resembles Sukuna, making it clear that immortality is what unites them. Now you may ask, why would Tengen attempt this? Even Kenjaku mentioned in chapter 206 that she is hiding a huge secret from everyone. Well, she wanted to be immortal and have a sense of self without needing a star plasma vessel. That way she could protect the world from Kenjaku but also from what she created, Sukuna. Yeah, they had us the first half, I'm not gonna lie. Remember, Tengen maintains the barriers in Japan that keep everyone safe. So. This would be a selfless decision, but teaching this method to Kenjaku and Sukuna, who mastered it, led to disaster. According to her, there are many methods of achieving human evolution, and Kenjaku just so happens to pick a method by merging humankind with her, whereas Sukuna found a means of immortality that surpassed both of them. Kashimo claims that his true form is perfect for jujutsu and is beautiful. So unlike Sukuna, who could choose his own vessel as mentioned in chapter 55, Tengen can not through this panel, which is why Kenjaku <laughs> laughed at her imitation through this panel. Like, let's be honest, we're all scratching our heads wondering why Tengen stored Sukuna's body for a thousand years unless she cared about him. Only a mother or sensei would do that. Even before Sukuna was born, he had already become the fallen one, as Angel described, because he had gone against the law of God and fate by eating his twin. If being born a twin was already seen as a bad omen, imagine people of that era finding out you're a cannibal. So as a result, Tengen preached Jujutsu and created the foundations for sorcerers to exist. Sukuna went against her wishes and walked the earth as a natural calamity, turning into a mixture of cursed spirit and human through evolution. However, they lived two completely different ideologies, which is why even though Sukuna hates everyone, he refers to his mother as Gubo. This word, which stands for stupid mother, is not an insult, but a form of respect and even love through humility. Sukuna claimed he was an unwanted child, which is linked to how Tengen was practically starving herself to death whilst pregnant. Maybe she did this because he wanted him to die, or maybe she did this on purpose to force an evolution through death. But all of this 
backfired. And it makes sense now because Sukuna's form of love is violence itself, tying into the fact that Yorozu was mad and claimed that it was not true love when Sukuna smirked at her interpretation of it. Given all that, we can see that there is a contrast between Sukuna and Tengen. Whilst the sun is the embodiment of selfishness, living each desire to the fullest and using any means to survive because it's ingrained into him before even being born, the mother is responsible for literally holding the entirety of Japan through her barriers, ensuring that curse energy is amplified and sorcerers can use jujutsu. In other words, Hengen has always relied on and lived for others in a stagnant manner. She never took an active stance on anything, letting life pass by taking a pacifist position. For example, she did not try to stop the culling game, even when she could because the barriers across Japan would have collapsed. But her gamble was incorrect and she fell into Kinjaku's hands, who mentioned that Tengen has not lived at all. She rotted her life away and forgot the very essence of Jujutsu, which is to take risk for evolution. This is something that neither Kinjaku nor Sukuna would ever tolerate. They are both indulgent who just want to create chaos in the world to satisfy their own curiosity or hunger. This is why, even if all three of them knew each other at some point, Tengen was left alone whilst Kenjaku and Sukuna reached a higher plane of existence. Later on, both Sukuna and Kenjaku established a binding vow yet again, mentioned in chapter 2 to 3. And it was Kenjaku who first showed Sukuna how to move his soul into indestructible fingers. As a result, Tengen's route to pacifism is related to her mistake of helping create Sukuna, as a core concept of Buddhism is repentance. Thus, this brings the story full circle back to chapter 136, where Yuki mentions an interesting thing. Tengen's barriers are the reason for the rise of stronger bloodline techniques, prominent jujutsu families, and a virtual monopoly of Japan on cursed energy. This seems very good on surface, but what if the main reason Tengen set up her barriers is so that Sukuna's terror does not spread in the world. By confining cursed energy to Japan, she made sure that Sukuna's revival and even residence only affected Japanese citizens, where sorcerers can counter it as they are following the pathway created by her. Now let me know what you think about this crackpot theory. And to enjoy more peak fiction, why not find out how Kafka became the strongest kaiju ever?